Imagine being asked to name some of the most amazing, incredible structures or cities in the world. Most likely, your answers will be limited to cities and structures on the surface. That's because you have almost no idea of what is hidden beneath today's metropolises. Cities with the most elaborate architecture and quirky life enrichment systems, ranging from government-built bunkers to entire communities shrouded in mystery. In this video, we're going to explore five of the world's largest underground cities. Burlington Bunker. First, we arrive at this massive 35-acre government-owned complex situated underground in the United Kingdom. It was initially dubbed Hawthorne by a journalist who disclosed the existence of this facility in his 1982 book, War Plan UK. Over the years, it has acquired various names, ranging from Stockwell to Subterfuge to Site 3. This substantial subterranean network in Wiltshire, England, now known as the Burlington Bunker, began development in the late 1950s with the goal of serving as a secret government facility to shelter government people in the event of a nuclear attack. It was built at the height of the Cold War, and the location was selected for its remoteness, making it perfect for establishing a secure underground facility away from people and possible adversaries. It becomes even more impressive when you learn that it was constructed of limestone and had been laid to grasp around 4,000 people. You'd think an underground bunker designed to protect you from nuclear assaults would be straightforward, right? That is not the case with the Burlington Bunker, which is equipped with every survival facility imaginable. Hospitals, accommodations, offices, storerooms, kitchens, and so forth. It was designed to be self-sufficient with its own electrical and power generating, water supply, and ventilation systems. It goes on to brag that it has the second biggest telephone exchange in Britain, as well as a BBC studio where the Prime Minister may address the country. It also features telecommunications equipment and served as a hub for organizing civil defense and emergency response in the aftermath of a nuclear attack. The bunker was meticulously built to provide optimum efficiency and safety. It features blast doors, airlocks, and decontamination chambers. The Burlington Bunker was a well-held secret until recently, when areas of the city were transformed into Cold War memorials. These areas are available to the public for tourism. This facility has not been utilized for the intended purpose, and we can only hope that it will not be. It might appeal to you to know that the English monarchy used a secret train connection to escape to the subterranean city, and the city had its own lake. What more could you ask for? There are several strange facts regarding the bunker. For example, the entrance to the Burlington Bunker is buried in plain sight as a conventional structure, leaving passers-by unaware of its true purpose. Within this massive bunker, there are a few hidden tunnels that go for miles under Wiltshire, presumably not for Badger Molas. Today, the Burlington is no longer in use and is administered by English Heritage as a tourist attraction. The Shanghai Tunnel. These tunnels have previously been linked to a variety of crimes, including abduction, human trafficking, and a more particular crime, which we shall discuss more later. But even these barbaric acts could dilute in the magnificence of this city. The Shanghai Tunnels, built in the 1900s, were first intended to move commodities between the city's companies and the ships on the waterfront. It was designed to link the basements of several buildings to the seaside. The Shanghai tunnels feature short hallways, poor light levels, and low ceilings. It contains branching passages that connect to various regions of the city above. However, as we all know, the 1900s were a period of trafficking, and this tunnel admirably suited the purpose. One custom made specifically for the Shanghai tunnels but which has faded over time is Shanghaiing. This is a more precise kind of human trafficking. Victims are drugged, abducted, and taken down underground tunnels from the city to the waterfront. It doesn't stop there. These people were then sold to ship captains as sailors. Every year, at least 1,500 males were abducted. Aside from Shanghaiing, 
These tunnels were also utilized for smuggling and as covert routes for criminals to travel unnoticed and undetected around the city. Derinkuyu. Derinkuyu, situated in Turkey's Cappadocia area, has been illustrated to be one of the most intriguing and densely linked subterranean towns. It is also one of the most extensive and most profound. It was abandoned in the 1920s after centuries of usage. It was discovered by a local man in 1963 while making repairs to his home and inadvertently knocked down a wall that revealed a passage leading to this fantastic underground city. It becomes even more remarkable when you realize that this was not the only way into the city. So far, over 600 entrances have been discovered in people's homes. Derinkinyu has 18 floors, although only eight are now available to visitors. Narrow tunnels and stairs link the several levels of this metropolis, providing access to various areas such as residential quarters, storage, and so on. The construction resembles that of a cave, and it is expected to be able to accommodate around 20,000 people. It is thought to have been erected during the Byzantine period, during the 7th and 8th century AD. It is assumed to have served as a place of refuge for locals during wartime, but its exact purpose is still debated. However, the presence of amenities such as wells and storage rooms goes to show that Darren Kuyu was indeed intended to aid in life sustenance for long periods of time. This underground city has its mysteries. The origin of Darren Kuyu is mysterious as no one knows the exact origin. Some postulate, though, that it may have been constructed by Phrygians or Hittites before its further development with future civilization. For an underground city that is primitive, its ventilation system is way ahead of its time, consisting of a series of ventilation shafts that provide fresh air to the underground city, thereby preventing the accumulation of bad air. There are also several churches and chapels carved into the rock going ahead to tell us that its inhabitants were religious. Derinkuyu, now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, serves as a reminder of the hardships that individuals and communities have encountered in the past, as well as the clever solutions they created to deal with them. Today, Derinkuyu is a popular destination for tourists visiting Cappadocia, who come to marvel at the old subterranean chambers and corridors. If you would like to learn more about the history of this underground wonder city, we invite you to take a virtual tour in our detailed video about it. You will find a link in the description. Next up on our list is the Lost City of Petra. Yeah, the lost we all know. The Lost City of Petra. Petra, such a beautiful name, often known as Rose City, is situated south of Amman, Jordan. This ancient city has been masterfully carved into the desert sandstone cliffs with beautiful architecture and strange landscapes. It's no surprise that it is one of the world's seven wonders. It covers 102 square miles and is a top-rated tourist destination. The subterranean nature of Petra served a variety of benefits for the people who lived there. One of these is the treasury, a reputed royal tomb or temple with an impressive exterior. There is also the Street of Facades, a row or array of graves along the city's eastern cliff. They functioned as burial chambers for Nabataean society's prominent members and were decorated with elaborate carvings and adornments. The Nabataeans created this remarkable structure. They were both nomads and great merchants. They sold spices, incense, and other goods from Arabia to Egypt and the Mediterranean Sea, becoming quite wealthy and deciding to dwell in Petra. Living in the desert was not difficult for the Nabataeans since they were excellent at water conservation. The residents of Petra were so affluent that they engaged the most outstanding carvers and builders to develop, by hand, the masterpiece that we see today, with the exception of the tiny route that leads to the great city, the Sikh which is a natural art form. Between 400 BC and 106 AD, Petra was a major commercial center and the capital of the Nabataean Empire. When the Romans took control, they built supplementary structures such as sculptures, squares, monuments, and so on. 
the Romans would eventually migrate away, taking their commerce north or to the sea. A chain of events would unfold, and this once great metropolis would be lost to the outside world. This would change in the early 1800s when a European tourist rediscovered it and brought the city to prominence, establishing it as a national treasure. Fun fact, portions from the film Indiana Jones were filmed in Rose City. Tons of secrets await to be uncovered, as 85% of this ancient marvel remains underground and has yet to be revealed. Super impressive, right? If you still want to dive deeper into the history and landscape of Petra, but don't have time for a trip there, you can do so with our detailed documentary video about the city. You'll find a link in the description. Next up is the Cité Souterraine de Naur, often known as the underground city of Naours. Second, this subterranean metropolis in France is around 108 feet deep and spans one to two kilometers, about half mile in length. This city originated as a limestone quarry erected in the second century, but it gradually became outdated. Major wars raged across the Roman Empire at the time. So many fled to this quarry for sanctuary. The villagers started using it to store things and hide from foes. They gradually started to build wells, stables, bakeries, churches, and other structures necessary for their existence and lifestyle. They meticulously organized their life below, even devising a strategy to route smoke from the bakery's chimneys down to the surface via houses and other surface buildings to avoid raising suspicions. Europe would ultimately become safer, eliminating the necessity for hiding, hence the city was abandoned. Fast forward to the 1800s, specifically 1887, when a man repairing his home discovered this hidden city and this once safe shelter for refugees became a big tourist attraction. Even during World War I, troops would visit this location to sightsee while off-duty. These troops would often inscribe diverse information on the city's chalk walls, some of which were pretty thorough, even including their home address. This city continues to have one of the most extensive collections of historical graffiti from the World War I period. This subterranean structure consists of 28 halls and 300 rooms. It's a real world wonder, isn't it? We've seen the splendor of these vast underground cities, and we know that behind these bricks, sand, and limestone lie tales and legacy. Humans are resilient and determined to solve any situation. The cleverness in the ideas to do so, and the social bond established, indicates that, as varied as we are, we are the same in various ways, as shown by these structures. Subscribe to the channel and continue to gain new knowledge by watching the video we offer on the left side of the screen.